So over the weekend, thousands and thousands of Americans marched in Washington, D.C. For what, you ask? Was it worker rights? Maybe health care for everyone? Possibly to take action on climate change, demanding that the government actually act so we can still have a habitable planet? Well, let's take a look at the crowd here. Mm, as you probably could have guessed, none of these issues were ones that they cared about. I mean, when you see the obey God, resist tyrants, and anti-socialism signs, I think you know what this is about. These dipshits were marching against vaccines in the middle of a pandemic, which is still very much a thing contrary to popular belief. And to say that they think they're victims would be an understatement. These people genuinely believe that having to show proof to get into a fucking Applebee's makes them as oppressed, if not more oppressed, than black Americans during the civil rights movement and even possibly Jewish people during the Holocaust. I wish I were kidding about this. And this is not a mischaracterization of their opinion. For example, RFK Jr., one of the leaders here, he breaks it down. And as you were going to see, they do indeed believe that you can make the case that they're more disadvantaged than Jewish people during the Holocaust. I, I'm saying it a second time because it doesn't seem real. Like, it seems like I'm being hyperbolic. But this is what they're saying. Take a look. Even in Hitler, Germany, you could... You could cross the Alps into Switzerland. You can hide in an attic like Anne Frank did. I visited in 1962 East Germany with my father and met people who had climbed the wall and escaped. So it was possible. Many died truly, but it was possible. Today, the mechanisms are being put in place that will make it so none of us can run and none of us can hide. The Within five years, we're going to see 415,000 low-orbit satellites. Bill Gates says his 65,000 satellites alone will be able to look at every square inch of the planet 24 hours a day. They're putting in 5G to harvest our data and control our behavior. Digital currency that will allow them to punish us from a distance and cut off our food supply vaccine passports wow don't even know what to say about that that is uh a bit of a stretch maybe he's being a little bit hyperbolic if you ask me i just <laughs> he is unironically suggesting that perhaps anti-vaxxers in the united states have it worse than jewish people during the holocaust because at least people like Anne frank could hide do you remember what happened to Anne frank do you remember why Jewish people were being hunted down. It wasn't to give them a life-saving vaccine. It was to execute them. So for you to compare this to the Holocaust, even to invoke that, or, you know, the civil rights movement, it is extremely offensive. It reeks of anti-Semitism. And it's just batshit fucking insane. Going to Dr. Robert Malone, according to Ben Collins of NBC News, uh, Robert Malone, the anti-vaccine doctor from Joe Rogan's podcast, also Jimmy Dores, by the way, just opened his speech in front of the Lincoln Memorial by invoking Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech at the March on Washington, adding that anti-vax marchers in D.C. today are standing on the shoulders of giants. So this anti-vax movement is actually an extension of the civil rights movement. It's so comical that I don't even know how to respond to this. I just can't help but laugh. I mean, <laughs> I don't like to share memes to make my point because this is kind of a boomer thing to do, admittedly. But this meme here was just perfect. I believe temporary inconvenience is oppression because I have no idea what real oppression is like. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's read up on some additional details here. This is provided to us by the Washington Post. Some of the people marching were white haired. Others were being pushed in strollers. More were white and many wore gear with slogans supporting former President Donald Trump. A group of men in front of a cart with a don't tread on me flag started chants of let's go Brandon and fuck Joe Biden to cheers. The few who wore masks risked the tirades of a man screaming, take those masks off and it's all a lie. Of course, what, what else would you expect? Later, about 10 men wearing the insignia of Proud Boys, an extremist group involved in the January 6, 2021 attack at the U.S. Capitol, lingered on the Lincoln side of the reflecting pool. They briefly engaged in a shouting match with a small group of counter-protesters at the edge of the rally, then walked away. The marchers carried posters and flags that included false statements such as vaccines are mass kill bioweapons and Trump won. A bus was parked beside the Washington Monument, wrapped in arrest or exile signs and displaying pictures of Anthony S. 
Fauci, Bill Gates, and Jacob Rothschild, the last an echo of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories involving the Rothschild family, a speaker blared Kelly Clarkson stronger, what doesn't kill you. The Kelly Clarkson was such a nice touch, I'd imagine. <laughs> um, let's be really clear here, uh, because I'm done coddling anti-vaxxers. These people aren't just delusional. This is a death cult. They are against a vaccine that is life-saving. It's already saved hundreds of thousands of lives, and they're against that during a pandemic. Now, you know, some maybe they were pro-vaccine, just anti-vax, uh, anti-mandate. But the thing is that you, you don't really need to be anti-mandate unless you're anti-vaccine. So to me, they're all one and the same. A lot of them were members of the far right. I'm assuming that, you know, this was a crowd of mostly right-wing people who are just protesting against what they perceive to be liberal tyranny and oppression from, you know, liberals and whatnot. But these people are psychopaths, and this is a death cult. And I have firsthand experience with this death cult, and I don't think that we should coddle them in order to, you know, not hurt their fifis. So let me let me give you an example here. So back in September, I shared this tweet. My grandma is the least political person ever. She takes her flu shot every year, yet dumb fuck anti-vaxxers and my family convinced her the COVID vaccine is dangerous, so she won't take it. She's in her fucking 90s. COVID would be a death sentence for her. Fuck anti-vaxxers. Now, this was in September of last year. Um, a lot has changed since then with regard to this story. So my grandma died. Yeah. She died. She was unvaccinated. Now, to be clear, we don't necessarily know what happened. But my uncle, who is not crazy, who was basically the only one by her side who cared for her, believes that she contracted COVID-19 and she lived in a nursing home. Maybe she wasn't very symptomatic. Maybe she didn't tell people of it. By the time she was admitted to the hospital, their, uh, the test that they gave her was negative for COVID. So the thinking from my uncle is that perhaps she had COVID and then she was no longer positive, no longer contagious, but it was kind of wreaking havoc on her body. She had pneumonia. She uh, ended up dying ultimately of heart failure. But COVID kind of attacks your organs, this was last year, so it's it's been some time. So it seems as if she died because she had COVID, not, not proven. But either way, my aunties convinced her, my, my dumb fuck aunties convinced her not to get the vaccine. And we'll never know. Maybe she didn't have COVID. But I hope that because they convinced her for the rest of their lives, just in the back of their mind, they have to live with the possibility that they killed their own mom. They killed my grandma because of their anti-vax beliefs, because of their delusions. And they didn't give a flying fuck about my grandma. They didn't ever visit her, never saw her. But they did make sure that the minute she was eligible, they drilled into her brain their deluded beliefs about vaccines. And my grandma was so fearful because of the bullshit that they put into her head that she wouldn't even listen to my uncle, who was the one person who actually gave a damn, who lived close by. She's in Hawaii, so I couldn't see her. My mom couldn't see her, who actually cared. So they, they scared her that much. They worked her into that much of a frenzy that she refused to take the vaccine. And she may very well have died because of it. So this is what we have to deal with, with anti-vaxxers. This is what they do. They convince people to not do what's in their best interest. And sometimes that has catastrophic consequences. And you can't directly attribute my grandmother's death to my dipshit aunties. But for the rest of their lives now, they have to live with that in the back of their head, wondering if maybe they are the ones who are responsible for their own mother's death because of their own fucking stupidity. And this isn't the only instance where this probably happened. Anti-vaxxers around the country have likely bullied people in their families into not getting the vaccines, and those people have died. In fact, it's happened because we've talked about these stories on my show. A 19-year-old teen over the summer during the Delta wave was bullied into not getting vaccinated by her own family. They all got COVID, and then she died. So this is happening. This is a death cult. These people do not understand what they are doing because they believe that if people get the vaccine, either they're going to be fucking microchipped, controlled by the government. Uh, some, like RFK Jr., believe that the vaccine itself is a bioweapon. Uh, I don't know if that's his word specifically, but he says that this is a bad vaccine and it's basically poisonous. This is what anti-vaxxers do.
So all the anti-vaxxers, Joe Rogan, Jimmy Dore, we don't know how many people they're affecting. It's impossible to quantify this. But in the back of their minds, I hope that they have to live with the fact that their misinformation might have killed someone. I hope that that guilt eats them away. I hope every single night when they lay down to go to bed, they think about how many lives they could be indirectly responsible for because they chose to push this anti-vaccine bullshit, either because they're in, you know uninformed and stupid themselves, either because maybe they, they want you know clicks and whatnot, but that's what these people are. They, they are a death cult, and it is way beyond the time to, to continue to call their feelings. Call them what they are. This is a death cult. These people are psychopathic, and it is important that we delegitimize them. Thankfully, they're losing. Even though we see this march, more people today have the vaccine in the United States than ever before. So they are losing, thankfully. But still, their influence is sweeping enough that people are still being affected by this anti-vaccine misinformation. People actually are fearful. Maybe they don't know either way. Maybe they're kind of ambivalent. And, you know, they're not necessarily conspiratorial, but there's enough people saying the vaccines are bad that they just think, well, maybe I won't risk it. Maybe I just won't get it and take my chances. And then they contract COVID and then they end up dying, getting in the hospital. It's just... It's really sad. This doesn't have to happen. These anti-science conspiratorial beliefs are literally killing people. It is deadly. So the anti-vax cult is a death cult. And the anti-vax uh, anti grifting leaders who are perpetuating this, spreading this for purposes of views and clicks, they're the ones at the end of the day that have to live with themselves, live with what they're doing to the country and the world.